Tradition Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. Crikey! Oi! How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing well. Just carrying on as best we, anyone can. Oi, oi! We're in the po- we're in the post My Little Pony uh, season funk, and it's now post series funk. So we gotta ah, get funky. Yes. Get down yeah. with your bad selves. Yeah, let's do get down. Do, <laughs> do the dance. Make a little love. Get down to my... Yeah. But also joining us today is Totero. I don't want to go. It's okay. It's okay. You're you doing to go, but you can't stay here. Okay. Closing time. <laughs> uh, yes. So, anywho, in today's episode, we are going to review Season 9, Episode 12, The Last Crusade. In this episode, an unexpected visitor to Ponyville threatens to break up the Cutie Mark Crusaders forever! Oh, oh no. no! The horror. Ooh. But anywho, before we carry on, first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you have to think? So, oh sure. my god, Scootaloo has parents! I know, right? She's, she's not some weird mutated Paris Bright, as previously suspected. My, my favorite my, my favorite one has always been Dusty Cat's explanation, and that is Scootaloo lives in a box under Rainbow Dash's house. That's horrible. Wow. Yeah, wow, Dusty. I... Getting, getting, full, getting full dark scale there is. I, I, I don't know if he admitted, but previously on his show, uh, Stay Dusty with Dusty Cats, I, I forgot what his title called. But he'll, Stay he'll Bronies, always, my friends. Yeah. He, he'll always say that. And it stuck with me. <laughs> but anyway, um, carry on. Well, anyway, so getting to see Skulu's parents finally and sort of completing the parental set, that was a treat. Uh, I'm going to have a, a lot to say about the central conflict and... Uh, sort of the resolution. Although what I found funny is that basically Lofty and Holiday, who we'd seen in comics but never in the show before, they really stole the show here. Were they in comics? Yeah. They were part of the Ponyville Mysteries arc. Oh, because I remember them first appearing in the novels. Well, okay, visually, I mean, because uh, right. we had no, they didn't really describe what they looked like. Uh, so we'll get into Holiday and Lofty, but it was, they were a wonderful addition to this as well. So all in all, I had a, a f- very fun time watching this, but I was also like, eh, wait a minute. All right, all right, all right. And Tara, what do you think? Well, I'm actually happy that we finally get to see Scootle's parents and, you know, all this stuff about her being an orphan and stuff like that, you know, it's at the window now. All those fan fictions of Scootle being an orphan is gone now. <laughs> and yeah. And this is the first for me seeing Holiday and Lofty for the first time. I actually didn't even know they appeared in the comics or novels for the first time. But I, through it all, I enjoyed it. But at the end, I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> all right, then, all right, then. And as for me, I like this com- <laughs> uh, comics. Yes, I, I like this episode. This episode is a lot of fun. And yes, what Tara said is true. All the fanfics of um, Scootaloo being an orphan or whatever it is it's kind of been destroyed but hey we get an explanation as to why and it's kind of strange and remember last few episodes when I say Mrs. Cake should stay at the um, bakery and stuff yeah this this explains a lot but anywho um, before I continue on spoilers are a bound so, if you have not watched this episode, pause here and go watch. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the episode because it is a lot of fun. So, anywho, let's start the review with, well, a cold. Running through the street at the speed of light and wanting to meet up with the CMCs. And to our surprise, uh, Scootaloo pops out and says she's at home. Wait, what? She has a home? Okay. Well, it's so, not really the it's not really the first time we've seen it. I think last time we saw Scootoo out of her house. Um, I forget the name of the episode, but it's the one where they're getting ready for the celebration of the uh, the Crystal Empire games. Really? Oh, uh, Flight to the finish. That's yes. it. Flight oh. to the finish. 
where they, oh, yeah. we, the rather heartbreaking image of uh, Skulu throwing away her scooter oh. and tearing down her posters and basically the death of dreams that life can present us with. And oh, I'm sad now. Why <laughs> did you bring that up? Oh, I'm sorry, Silver. Oh, no. There, there. I'll pat you on the back. Oh. Okay, that, that is true. That is true. So I am wrong. Uh, but still, uh, this pony, a uh, male pony unicorn named Skedaddle. So Skedaddle tells the CMC that he got his cutie mark and thanks him for it. And the CMCs ask, what is your cutie mark? And it's for not tying. And the CMCs are a bit confused because did they say to do that? And Skedaddle goes on an explanation of how he went on a boat, the boat oar was broken and stuff, and he used the string or whatever that was around to tie the oar together, and he got his cutie mark. So yay, you know, he's going to tell every pony in town. Awesomeness. He'll start by saying, I'm on a boat. I'm on a boat. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, don't you mean the Kostruggle version of that song? <laughs> I'd rather not. That one was... <laughs> Yeah, that was rather disappointing, to be honest. <laughs> so, anywho, this is the first time that we meet up with uh, Scootaloo's aunts, uh, Aunt Lofty and Aunt Holiday. So, uh, man, I- I'm forgetting who's who. Give me a second. Uh, yes, okay. Aunt Holiday uh, just says that she's proud of them for helping the kid doing or discovering his cutie mark. And Aunt Lofty just says, okay, um, you, you guys are awesome, but I got no idea how to finish this quilt. Quilt. Qu- quilt? Quilt? I think it's a quilt. quilt. Yes. Quilt. All right. So, uh, no idea how to finish this quilt. And the CMC gave her some ideas. And, well, the bell rung and she, well, both of them need to head to their home. Uh, she tells Scootaloo that... Uh, some adults will be taking care of her for a bit until they come next week. Uh, let me see if I can. Okay. Um, so first up to bat would be the cakes. They will stay with you tonight. Then Rarity. Then Rainbow Dash. And after that. Uh, yeah. And, and then after that. So I, I remember. Okay. So on. So a lot of adults will be staying at school's house to take care of her cake. So they say their goodbyes, and there's a knock on the door, and it's Derpy! Derpy delivers letters. Yay. And Skutulu is excited because her parents are coming in town. Woohoo! Yay. So intro music happens, and I'm going to pause here. So I'm going to go differently for a bit. Tara, what do you think? Well, so far I, I enjoyed how <clears throat> like they're helping other cults out, and I'm pretty sure that the... Um, Skedaddle got his cutie mark while at the cutie mark camp. And it's nice how, you know, now they everyone's getting their cutie marks more often. And again, we're introduced to two, well, to me at least, two new characters that I've never seen before. Aunt Holiday and... Han- and ugh, I can't talk now, Norman. You're rubbing off on me. Oh. And we get to see Aunt Holiday as well. And even though they're not technically helping her out with a cutie mark, at least they're helping her out with an idea for a quilt. And then the big reveal that Scootaloo has parents and everyone's jaws dropped. <laughs> I know, right? I also like to add, too, that isn't the isn't there um, an Indiana Jones movie also called The Last Crusade? Yep. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. yes. References. What about you, Silva? All right. Well, what Skedaddle, I find him pretty, pretty cute. Just the way he runs around with such enthusiasm. Uh, and probably the town is like, oh, geez, another one. When are we going to get these kids some Ritalin? <laughs> but most of all, I love uh, Holiday and Lofty's uh, designs. And also how their characters are presented because they are complementary. It's very much like the cakes. Okay, the cakes are visually complementary. You got one tall, one short, one, one a bean pole, one a little plump. One cool colors, one warm colors. Well, look at Holiday and Lofty. Uh, let's see here. Holiday is Scootaloo's uh, biological aunt, right? I'm not sure, but she, which, I guess which is so. the Which is the one making the quilts? Uh, Lofty. Uh, Lofty, but I think the biological one would be uh, Holiday because she has an Australian accent. Yes. 
So you have Holiday. She's warm colors, you know, a yellowish coat, uh, reddish hair, very warm tones, and a soft-spoken voice and a very rounded appearance. And she talks about uh, supplying healthy food for her niece. Now, complimenting her is Lofty, who uh, is much sharper angles, taller, and she's the one who bakes the cookies. <laughs> because, you know, it, it, I think it's important to have at least a little bit of fun. Everything in moderation, but... So you have these two, visually they complement one another. Holiday has this really sweet, uh, sort of soft-spoken voice, and while, uh, while uh, Lofty has a more biting sense of humor, she's not cruel. I think that's, that's very important to emphasize. It's not as extreme as one's nice, one's harsh. It's just that she has a very wicked sense of humor, as, as we would see at the end of this episode. So I love it when couples are shown as a complimentary, that it's not just exactly the same. Sorry, Pinky and Cheese. <laughs> so that's really enjoyable. And a criticism I've seen floating around is that while these two are supposed to be a couple, they don't really show, they don't show a lot of public displays of affection. In my eyes, look, the whole point of this is their impact on the story, which is Scootaloo's story. They're not going to stop the story just so the two of them can exchange a kiss arbitrarily or out of nowhere. They work together and they complement each other just by their presence and their personality. I consider that a pretty wonderful uh, expression on its own. True that, true that. And in all honesty, you don't really need to show public display of affection. Like, in all honesty, it's rare to see public display of affection for couples don't care if they're same sex or different like nobody really well it's rare to see unless they're very insecure yeah uh -huh. and in this situation here they're just talking and they're just doing stuff like mm, i don't know stuff but uh before you carry on uh when the what we call this uh the ponyville mystery thing came out uh, Pixel Kitties, uh, a very awesome artist, uh, made a rendition of Aunt Holiday and Aunt Lofty. And totally different. S there's, si there's similarities, but they're totally different in terms of color and overall design. Would you agree, Silver? They are, as are the uh, comic versions of Holiday and Lofty. So we have witnessed at least several different iterations on the same characters. But I feel like the I feel like the TV show is the Cannon. hard stop. Yep. What what it says goes because it is the source from where all these others derive inspiration. But hey, one Pixel Kitties is an awesome artist. Two, the comics were willing to to show this and make a uh, debut, so I've got no complaints there. Eh, it's just how things work out. The question, I guess, is. Did Hasbro or whoever you charge with the central storyline, did they not say, hey, let's make a design for these characters and just use that going forward no matter what? Silver, if you read emails, you should know. <laughs> I did not read the emails because that's. I feel like that's an intrusion. True. I, I didn't read the emails too, but one could have guessed. One could always guess. I could, I could guess that uh, several members of the staff are just willed to be in disguises. It's completely <laughs> unfounded, but it's a guess. I know, right? Or changelings. Mm. But I noticed that you guys are not pointing out that other parents or other adults are taking care of Scootaloo. So, oh, we, what do you guys think of that? Oh, okay, it okay, takes okay. a village. It takes a village. Mm. All right, all right, all right. I, I just find it fascinating, really, because. For almost, quote-unquote, nine years now, Scootaloo has been, well, living with uh, other ponies besides her parents. So that, that's really interesting. Honestly, that speaks to a level of community I don't see anymore in modern culture. I was lucky. I grew up, uh, I grew up in a neighborhood where like high school and middle schoolers would play with the little kids. That doesn't happen anymore as far as I know. Yeah, you don't really see that a lot. Which is sad to me. But now, so having school where she can depend on her neighbors and they have 
so tight knit a community that they're happy to, you know, watch someone else's kid uh, over a weekend. That's no small commitment of time. So it speaks to why Ponyville is a pretty awesome place, despite the <laughs> habitual attacks by creatures <laughs> and the town actually going at one another's throats at times for rather sudden and arbitrary reasons. So it's a bit extreme in its reactions, but this is one of the more pleasant ones. Well, true that, true that, true that. <laughs> uh, but anywho, um, I'm going to carry on if there's no objections to it. I do not object. No. All right, then. In the next scene, it's the next day, and uh, Miss Shirley is trying to teach a class about the weather factory in Cloudsdale. She described that the weather factory uh, produced snow, rain, and sunshine. I'm iffy on that one. Maybe but they store. Maybe they store the uh, natural sunlight in solar collectors and process it. But isn't oh. Celestia in charge of the sun? I know, right? This, this I'm she, really on that one. She's a, she is a, in charge of raising and lowering the sun. But what you do with right. this light? Ah, that's someone else's problem. Compartmentalizing delegation. Twilight's got to learn it. All right, then. All right, then. But anywho, uh, as Shirley tries to teach the class, she gets interrupted by Scootaloo. Uh, she's really excited that her parents are gonna come and whatnot. And yeah, she. Checks on the door, checks on the window, and Shirley says, Okay, kids, uh, how about a little bit of show and tell? And Scootaloo goes up front telling about her parents are coming back to town and they're really awesome. Uh, one is a, what you would call this, florist, and another one, I, I forgot the term that they use, but uh, Scootaloo's, bot yeah, botanist, and what was it again? Creatures? I forgot. Uh, let's see here. What is it when you... Well, there's many terms. There's a botanist who does plants. An animal tracker? Uh, just creatures. That, well, uh, over here, they just mentioned... Uh, a zoologist. Zoologist, That's yes. It. That makes sense, yes. So, long story short... Too late. Scoot <laughs> uh, true that. Scootaloo's dad is a zoologist, while his mom, or her mom, is a bot botan... Bot bot oh, wow, how do you... Botanist, yes. <laughs> A botanist, yes. Botanist, yes. So she describes that her dead work is dangerous and whatnot, and Snips here says, I don't believe you. And Scootle is like, kill the non-believer. <laughs> <laughs> well, talking about kill, right, <coughs> there is a alligator. What would they call it? Not another, a a crocodile. crocodile. Yeah, a crocodile coming in. And, well, said crocodile munches on Apple Bloom's desk, and they all hide or, or they all get onto Shirley's table and are really scared. Oh, no. Until there is a pony wrangling the crocodile and tying his maw shut. Maw shut, yes. Crikey. So, yeah. So there's uh, Pegasus talking the crocodile down and walking back to its cage and... Blimey, it's Scootaloo's parents. Bl so, blimey? Wait, wait, blimey? Yeah, did you say blimey? I don't, I don't know Australian accents, y'all. Well, okay, I appreciate the yo because I could hear Safi screaming in the distance. But uh, <laughs> blimey, that's, well, it's, I guess it's Cockney. Crikey, yeah, that's what I meant yeah, to say. Crikey, blimey, the, the, you, you're in the complete. Blimey the is more of a British thing. You are in the wrong continent. <laughs> if we're going to if we're going to make gross stereotypes, we should at least try to be geographically accurate. There's only so far what you can go with these things. True, that, true. That. Next year he's gonna be like sacre bleu. Poor, poor, poor blimey, watch your Harry. <laughs> oh crikey! But anywho, <laughs> but anywho, um, sit. Ponies ask her parents. She goes to hug them, and well, uh, who now is named her? Uh, snaps, was it? No, no, no. Snaps. Snails? Uh, Snips and snails. The, the parents. Oh, Snapshutter. Oh. Yes, that's his thing. Oh, oh, the parents. Yeah, Snapshutter says sorry for the 
uh, intrusion, the crocodile can get a bit cranky and wants to go for a walk and whatnot. Yay. And we just we just endangered dozens of children. And all we got to say is sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My bad. Sorry. <laughs> We're but so anywho. sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. But anywho, with that, Charity says class is over for the week while she goes to a bar and have a nice cool one to take the edge off. And you know what? I'm going to pause here. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Well, I, I feel like we should have a moment of silence for Cheerilee. This is her last role in the show. Oh, really? No. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, as, far as, as far as memory serves, that is the last speaking role she enjoyed in the show. Oh, poor Cheerilee. The stress is killing her. <laughs> but anywho, uh, Silver, what do you think? Well, I mean, I, we've only just sort of been introduced. So it's like, wait, is that Steve Irwin pony? Oh. I know, right? <laughs> I feel like I, uh, I can't really... I don't want to make any jokes because it, it's poor taste to speak ill of someone who's passed. <laughs> True. But, but at the same time, i just like, you know, maybe you shouldn't walk a crocodile through town, especially in proximity of foals. I'm just saying! But it's nice. And uh, Steve Irwin's wife is the inspiration for uh, her, Skulu's mother. So they... So it's fun to see that that reference. At the same time, I feel like they... Okay, the only other parents who are a reference is Twilight Sparkle's mother, who is a reference to Twilight G1's Velvet. Twilight Velvet. I did so I don't know of any other parent being directly inspired by another... Uh, by a real world or a past uh, episode character. Oh, wait, I'm wrong. Rarity's Ooh. father. Oh, yeah? Rarity's father. I believe he's inspired by Sporter. Sporter? Who's that? Uh, it was a... Uh, how do I put this? There was one episode, just one episode of G1 My Little Pony that featured male characters. Oh. Oh. Let's see here. Okay. Let's see here. Rarity's father. What's his name again? Hondo Flanks. Okay. <laughs> But his design, I believe, is inspired by uh, my the Big Brother ponies. My Little Pony Big Brother, brother ponies. Which means they're always watching you. <laughs> always watching. Oh, God. Thank you, God. Always watching. Let's see here. Tex, quarterback. Okay. Well, there was a character named Quarterback who had football cutie mark, but no. Nope, 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 nope. Well... Suffice to say, I think that uh, Hondo Flanks may be inspired by a G1 pony, but I'd have to do some digging. But still, awesomeness here. Tara, what do you think? Well, okay, we finally get to see Scootaloo's parents, and I think that, I mean, I do have, like how they add at least a little bit of genes, I guess they could say, to Scootaloo. I mean, Scootaloo's got her mother's eyes, and she's kind of got her dad's purplish mainish hair although her, his, her dad's mane is more darker than hers but another thing too i know it's a minor little detail and, and you know i'm all for pointing out details here but during the show and tell before her parents appear scootaloo says that her dad has a scar for being in a manticore's cave for three moons and i'm looking i'm like he doesn't have that scar on his face where's that scar <laughs> that, that would have made him well, more cool well if you buy him a few drinks you might you know <laughs> 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 but, and then I'm also curious what Fluttershy would think of these exotic creatures mm, and you know how, how they're just in cages and whatnot you know just, just saying <laughs> well okay she she didn't ha raise much issue in Tartarus when they were in cages that is true <laughs> but another thing I, th I would like to point out sorry <laughs> but another thing I'd like to point out too is that uh, Aunt Holiday and Lofty one was an earth pony and one was a pegasus and same with Scootaloo's parents the father is an earth pony and the mother is a uh, pegasus your nice. father was a hell hamster and your mother <laughs> smelled of elderberries <laughs> now, now go away or I will taunt you a second time oh you gotta love that series <laughs> oh, boys okay uh, with that I think I can carry on yes. yep. <laughs> they go on really? to say 
I blow my nose at you. I fart in your general direction. Yes, they're, f they're talking in French because apparently I'm buying from Norman's point of view of stereotypes. Now Norman is rubbing off on you. Oh, no. Oh, you silly little man. But anywho, as they wait outside the school, um, Scudo's parents invite uh, the CMCs out for ice cream. Sunday, yay! So while having ice cream, they talk about how uh, the CMCs has accomplished a lot while they were away. So that's awesome. And uh, Scudo's parents sit her down and tells her that hey um you're gonna see a lot of us uh more often because well you're gonna follow us to Sri Lanka that's not what we say but what is it called hmm I'm forgetting because uh, Sri Lanka is kind of an Asian thing so yay and this gives the CMCs a bit of panic because they are going to get separated and oh no. <laughs> so in the tree house, they have a meeting and they cry <laughs> and they cry their eyes out, not knowing what to do or just accept the fact that she has to move. Rainbow Dash barge in saying that yo girls, I have tickets for the Wonder Balls. Anybody wants them? And they explain the situation to Rainbow Dash, and Rainbow Dash says Yo, you guys are the CMCs. Since when does that stop you and stuff? And with that, they came. Sorry, and with that, they come up with a plan to, well, try and make Scootaloo stay in Ponyville. Yay! So anyway, uh, I am going to rush through the plans. So plan A is kind of create a mythical beast where, uh, Lofty. Sorry, Scootaloo's parents are forced to stay in Ponyville to kind of uh, research and stuff. And then uh, it seems that said creature is a fake. Oh no. Plan B is, well, to unify, making uh, showing the parents that they're a set of three and they can't be separated. And when they show their cutie mark to Scooter's dad, uh, Snaps, uh, he points out that, yeah, you guys may have the same cutie marks but they are different look at the symbol there fanboys have been debating about this for a while now Ooh. <laughs> and plan c was to tie their hoofs together okay um didn't go as planned and the last plan is to uh to chain themselves to a pole and going on strike and that failed miserably. And with that, uh, Scootaloo's parents tells her that, you know what, Sh um, Scootaloo, why don't you stay with your friends? Um, say, how do I put this? Yeah, stay with your friends and remember the good times and whatnot. Okay, bye-bye. And with that, I'm going to pause here. So, Silver, what do you think? Well, this is where people started to dis really dislike Scootaloo's parents because they basically breeze back into her life and so they say, okay, you say goodbye to everyone you know and love. We're going. Bye. <laughs> True that. At the same time, I feel like, okay, my dad, he's a lawyer. And in my childhood, he had a very uh, demanding case that would require a lot of back and forth. So instead, we chose to move for a time to a whole other state. And they didn't ask uh, my brother and myself if we wanted to move because we were kids and it is an unfortunate truth that sometimes the demands of life really do take you to other places and maybe you don't get a say in it at the same time they didn't announce this on on a saturday and we moved on a monday i mean that's a that's equestrian accelerated timetables at play once again and we'll see more of that later on in this episode but at the same time while i was sad and i was going to miss uh, the people in my neighborhood, again, the kids who were willing to play with, with well, the teenagers who were willing to play with kids much younger than they. Nobody tried to stop it because that's part of life. So when Rainbow Dash uh, is saying, oh, no, you can't leave. You belong in Ponyville forever. I thought, you know what? I get how this might appeal to a child's uh, fantasy of neighbors 
uh, trying to make them stay because they're oh so important. The truth is, I think there's some uh, a very strong unrealism in both parties. So the push to make them stay and the push to make them to make Scootaloo leave right away is uh, it it goes a little too far into fantasy in my eyes, a fantasy for the young. The various uh, tricks, I mean, the Crusaders do a lot, but they also destroy a lot. It's amazing the 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 number of lawsuits they've managed to avoid. Absolutely amazing. Uh, what about you, Tara? Well, I'm actually kind of one of those people that didn't really like Scootaloo's parents when they came in. Because yeah, I was happy when they first appeared. But then all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, we're going to take you away from everything. But you just got here and you're just going to take her away. Like basically abducting her right off the spot. I mean, I know they're the parents, but you snatch away. Don't even give her a heads up or anything. Like, come on. <clears throat> But another thing, too, I, I, I'd also like to point out is that uh, kind of still at the beginning of the introduction where they introduce the parents, you see them have in cages a bugbear, a cockatrice, a cragadale, and uh, um, four-eyed creature. I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right. The buffo grin? Oh, oh. This was my oh. Of it. It's the one oh, that the... was from the friend, the end in friend. Oh, yeah, the oh. Uh, burfo grin. Yeah, that one. And these are all from the Everfree Forest, and yet Scootaloo talks about, oh yeah, my parents had to be at a faraway place. So like, all these creatures in the Everfree Forest, they could have been living in Ponyville this whole time. Well, and plus, the, the Burfogrin can actually talk. Nobody knows the troubles I've seen. Nobody <laughs> knows but Celestia. <laughs> Celestia knows everything. <laughs> oh, boys. <clears throat> But... So I, I've just the fact that they're imprisoning a sentient creature is uh, what? <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, true that, true that. But uh, for me, uh, like <clears throat> I, I'm gonna tell a story like Silver did, and I can relate with Silver because when I was young, my my dad would travel from place to place. Uh, he was. Uh, electrical engineer working under oil and gas so uh, we would travel from well i was from the capital and we had to move down to the south of where i am now so we would do that on a few times till we settled down but during those times of moving and whatnot it was not easy it was not easy uh get, 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 getting friends and losing friends till I become quote unquote jaded to the whole idea of having a stable friend. I, I think my personality back then was very timid and I was in my own world and I didn't really interact well with people until I became an adult. I think I'm an adult. I'm not sure. We're all talking about uh, pastel colored ponies in a cartoon. I, I tend to view adulthood as a sliding scale or uh, a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I, I do understand the feeling of what Scooter is going through here now. And yeah, I mean, this scenario here where Scootaloo is forced to move is not an easy one. And I can relate and I can feel for her. But at the same time, too, the reasons why she, the parents want Scootaloo to join them is a valid one. Because with the return and defeat of King Sombra... Uh, the dangers around Ponyville, they w they worry for her and they want her to be close so they can protect her. I totally understand that, but oh, uh, uh, hey, hang on, hang on, hang on. I this all this stuff about Sombra. What about what about the Storm King who locked Scootaloo in a cage? Oh, non cannon. <laughs> Don't you no, non-canon me? It cannot be non-canon. <laughs> they literally showed the Storm King and the... I mean, I know it was a hallucination, but when Silverstream was going through that test, they showed those creatures. And they even mentioned the movie from time to time. Don't say it's non-canon. <laughs> uh, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. No, but I... I, I totally think you're, you're saying, but you're saying it wrong. I know. Uh, I mean... <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. But no, uh, the thing is... With all the threat that's going on recently, uh, her parents want her to be close so they can take care of her. I, I don't fault them for that, but the method and the approach that they 
take is a bit jarring. Taking her out of her element suddenly, like, man, that's not great at all. And trying everything to stay in Ponyville. Uh, I, I can't fault them for that. I can't fault them for that. So, um, I'm just going to continue on. If no well, Actually, I do want to point see. out one I... moment that I, that's actually true about what just happened right now. All right, <laughs> it's the right. one part when they take a picture of the cutie marks and they're all like, all of our cutie marks are the same, so we belong together. And Snapshot is like, but you don't have the same cutie mark. Apple was like, sure we do. It was like, yeah, the outside is, but the insides are different. And then Scrooge's like, how do we argue with that? And it's like, just what happened now, Norman, how you said it's non-canon. And we were kind of <laughs> arguing with you about it. And you got nothing to say about it because it's true. <laughs> you, have, you have been torn apart by our blinding logic. Even though this conversation has become the comment section of my own YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the comments I see on your channel is, he's alive. Oh, it's a new video. He lives. <laughs> No, he, he lives. If, 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 if ponies check this one out, like dudes. Ah, boys. Oh, boys. Anyway, I'm going to carry on. Yes, now you continue. Yes. So, anywho, <clears throat> Scootaloo goes to the train station, not wanting to stay because if she goes away, uh, Scootaloo's parents will be forced to go without her. And the CMCs want to join her because they're the CMCs. And I don't think they have a destination, but when they hop on the train, they go to Aunt Holiday's and Lofty's house, which is a pretty nice cabin in the woods. I think so. Cabin in the woods? In the woods. No! <laughs> yeah. Run away! Run away from the cabin in the woods! <laughs> but anywho, they go and meet up with them, and to Aunt Holiday's surprise... Scooter's there and and Lofty shows the quilt that she made and it's really awesome and she says that it was inspired by them and uh, Scooter shows a frown and and Lofty says oh okay um it's still a work in progress it's still a work in progress and Scooter just um speaks up and tells the whole situation of how her parents are in town and wants to take her away and stuff and with that, um, I, I forgot, did the CMCs or what, the ant say something about trying to stay in town or something like that? Oh no, yeah. Uh, if I remember right, uh, the ant says that you guys are, you three are important. You guys are a, a team. You can't split you guys up. And with that, the CMCs got an idea and Aunt Holiday says that you don't have to explain it. Your friends are going to do so so yay and in the next day Scootaloo goes back home and tells her parents that hey uh, guys before we go I need to show you guys something and they go to the town hall where it's the CMC appreciation day wow okay so anywho uh, during this event every pony there and every creature there shows or explains um, how the CMCs changed their life from this, from uh, helping ponies or helping blank facts getting their cutie marks and helping other creatures uh, gain friendship or something like that and so on. And the three of them are a team and cannot be separated and whatnot. And... Yeah, this is going to go to the end. So, you know what? I'm just going to plow through. And with that, Scootaloo's parents call Scootaloo and tells her that we never knew how important your role is here. And we finally understand. And, well, you can stay here with your friends or you can stay here in Ponyville. And there's a big problem because... The parents recently sold their house. And well, and Holiday and Lofty says, since Ponyville is a really awesome town, they might stay there and Scootaloo can stay with them. And with that, everybody is happy. The Scootaloo, sorry, the CMCs won't be separated and everybody's having a great time. Yay. But in the meantime, before they can move into the new house, they have a box set up 
under Rainbow Dash's house. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, thanks, thanks, Dusty. <laughs> Which is floating in the sky, I might add. So yeah, that's gonna be one low-hanging box. <laughs> Okay, and if that episode ends, so Silver, what do you think? Well, I—I I mean, it's great to see them all coming together for this uh, sort of this celebration. This is not the last episode for these characters, but it is the last Cutie Mark Crusader episode. Really? What about that yeah. number twenty-two or twenty-three? Was it? Well, we're gonna get to that, but that's right. for the characters as children. It's not doing to their role as the cutie mark crusaders and then there's also going to be uh the the big mac question uh, so yeah. like i say it's not the last for episode for these kids as characters it is this is however a celebration of their role as the cutie mark crusaders hence the title the last crusade mm, makes sense, makes sense. a celebration a celebration of all that they've done, all the ponies they've helped. It was great to see trouble shoes and uh, even feather bangs in the audience for this <laughs> yeah. celebration. And uh, it was nice to see Gabby and Tyramar again. So that's that's always cool. Too bad Gabby didn't have a speaking role. Well, they uh, <laughs> the, she will. Oh boy, will she? Oh, that's right. But uh, like I'm assuming with Terramar, that since he only had one line, since he already was there for uh, student council, they probably said, "Hey, can you just record this extra line? Here's a little more money. <laughs> shut up and take our money." Actually, don't shut up. That's why we're paying you. <laughs> All right, right, right. <clears throat> and so it's a fun. Sorry. It's a fun celebration, but again, it plays into sort of the fantasy of, oh, the whole t the whole community would come out and demand that I stay because I'm so awesome. <laughs> yeah, but showing the parents what she accomplished, even with a what you call this um, Wonderbolt salute, that that is awesome, yo. You didn't see Applejack getting anything like that on Applejack Appreciation Day. Yep, true, Diane. But what about you, Tara? I really enjoyed it. I mean, there was that whole part part I didn't really like how once they came, they were like basically forcing Scootaloo to join them. And I was like, really? And then there's that whole montage of them at least attempting to try to make her stay. I do like that one little timbit, though, where Apple, uh, Applejack, <laughs> Apple Bloom uh, took some potion lessons from Zakoa and tried making a potion on them staying together. It's like, oh, that's a good little callback because Apple, uh, I keep calling her Applejack. <laughs> It's a nice little callback when Apple Bloom used to go visit Zakora a lot, and she's been learning from her. But I do like how at the end it's like you know fight fire with fire. They're leaving because it's their job, so show the parents that you have to stay because it's your job. Uh, true that, true that. There's always something good with that. Yep, yep. And yeah, I I can't say much because I I totally agree. And you know what? Um, let's go to final thoughts. Silva, what do you think? of this episode overall. Oh, it's a thoroughly enjoyable episode. It's got great humor. It's got great references. I love the introduction introduction of Scootaloo's uh, extended family in addition to her totally for real parents. No question <laughs> it anymore. Uh, I've already talked about the fantasy of, you know, the kid's fantasy of, oh, everyone would, would rally to make me stay. I'm, how to put this? Learning to adapt is a big part of growing up. And so I sometimes question if this was the right decision to to present a story where basically they didn't change or they didn't have they didn't face that change. But at the same time, we we would get an episode about that change later with uh the with the last problem. Mm -hmm. So I kind of get why. Uh, Scootaloo didn't move because they were going to tackle that with Twilight. <laughs> so all in all, there are there are moments where I feel like my suspension of disbelief was stretched a little too thin. But all in all, it's a it's just a fun, kind of heartwarming episode and with uh, introduction of great characters. And I like that they're not afraid to introduce something new in the final season. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And what about you, Tara? I I enjoyed it from beginning to end. Like I said earlier, there was that one little timbre I kind of didn't like, 
But, you know, you kind of learn from... Your, I'm not saying, like, you learn from your mistakes with the writers, but it's kind of like, you know, it's part of growing up is you learn. And uh, I, I really like the uh, introduction of how we finally get to see Skrulu's parents and how, you know, Cutie Mark Appreciation Day and, that you know, every job is basically important. Even a tiniest little job could be very important and make, make it be, like, a big thing. And I enjoyed the comedy. And as the last, I wouldn't say it's like the final episode we see of these three, but as the last Cutie Mark Crusaders episode, I think it ended on a good note. True that, true that, true that. And as for me, this episode was a lot of fun. I love uh, finally getting to see Scootaloo's parents and extended family because we've always, (laughs) the fan has always been questioning do they even exist? And finally, we get the answer to that. And on top of that, we know that we got ants that are, well, lack for a better word, um, lesbian parents or lesbian couples. And a fun fact about that, um, the My Little Pony comics, from what I understand in Malaysia, are banned and won't be imported in. And the reason is because of Aunt Lofty and Aunt Holiday. So, yeah, that sucks. Wait, but the comics? I mean, are we talking just the Ponyville Mysteries or all comics together? All comics together. Hmm. Because uh, there's this one time when I was trying to buy one of the issues via Comixology. They were not available. I was scratching my head and wondering, what the hey? And I had to buy the comics using the My Little Pony comic book app. It was not really fun. So, uh, upon talking to a friend, he explained to me that the reason why is because the situation here. Um, Malaysia is a bit, uh, how do you put this, strict in terms of... Um, how do I put it? Uh, same-sex marriages or couples. And this year, being out in the open, I'm, I'm guessing that this episode will not be aired in Malaysia. I have a strong feeling. So, yeah. But if you use a VPN, <laughs> there's a different story altogether. Um, what, besides that? Yeah, I, I like this episode a lot. This episode was awesome and they highlight the awesomeness that the CMCs did throughout their nine years of being here. We get to see a lot of callbacks from Troubleshoes to uh, Big Mac and also Sugar Bell and even uh, ten- Tender Hoofs, was it? Uh, tre- Trender Hoof? Yeah, no, Tender Wait, Hoof. No, he, the tap dancing tre- one. Tre- oh, I uh, forget the ten- name of that one. Tender Taps. Uh, tender Taps. And so on. Like, they show a lot of the ponies that the CMC help. From that Tiara pony, you know, the one with the dog. Uh, from almost looking like Mendo pony <laughs> and so on. So, yeah, this, this episode was a lot of fun. A lot of great, awesome callbacks. Oh, boys. But anywho, Silver, what are we going to do for next week's episode review? Well, we're not going to do an episode review. Oh my. Yes, what a twist. Uh, Instead, we're going to be talking about live-action Disney remakes and their rise and continuing. Hmm. All right. (laughs) That seems out of left field, but you know what? We dig it. We dig it. And also, that episode will be sponsored by Master of Lag. Oh, boy. This this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. I can can clearly tell. (laughs) So anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmbsshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Uh, where can the good people find you, Silver? Oh, you can find me many places. If you go to YouTube and do a search for Silver Quill or After the Fact, I shall appear. You can also find me on Twitter and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. Uh, also on Patreon, MLP Silver Quill. And newly added a coffee account under just Silver Quill, all one word. And on Wednesdays, you can find me on Equestria Daily posting editorials or comic reviews. Ah, awesome, awesome, awesome. Guys, go check him out because Silver is awesome and most of his work is really good. 
<laughs> most of his work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but bad, bad wording the condi- there. What's the conditional? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Bad wording there. Uh, all of his works are awesome. Yes, that's what I meant to say. Yeah, be sp- oh, no, no, we, you've opened the door. Be specific now. Uh, you're doomed. <laughs> I don't know. I just say stuff. I know. Uh, me no speaking English. To <laughs> Excuses. <laughs> uh, me Asian. Me no understand English. To. So anyway, Daryl, where can the good people find you? <laughs> uh, I don't know if I should. I mean, you just buried your own tomb, Norman. <laughs> I don't know. Wait. You will find. <laughs> okay, but if I should, the good people could easily find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Torterra1324, or they could just do a simple Google search and I'll be on all those platforms. And they could also find me on my Patreon page. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Go check Terra out. He's awesome. And well, also please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyWithLife.com. Links are in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you for me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, Master of Lag, Tristan, and also, Jeffrey, thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecilia Vaquil. And I am Torterra. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Bye-bye. Alright, then. For people at home who are hearing this right now and hearing the this episode of the MBS show 388 I mentioned that Seppi might be on and she's not sorry about that because Seppi it's because Scootaloo's parents kidnapped her oh yeah <laughs> yeah just but... like how they'll soon kidnap me since I'm an exotic creature oh god no they'll go to use a pokeball a great blue ball <laughs> no not the blue balls yeah.